Why, hello everyone, I'm back. It's good to see ya. Just waiting for everybody to trickle in. My name is Paul Tranny. I'm gonna have some fun in Photoshop and I'm sure you will as well. Uh, again, we're gonna dive into making some cool retro futurism. So basically that uh, what the ideas that we thought were gonna be the future right now, I should have a jetpack, a flying car, uh, I don't know, doors that go, I guess that I guess they have that at the grocery store. <laughs> the only thing we got from Star Trek are the doors, and they're in the grocery stores. Um, sorry if my uh, yeah. So that's about it. I'm gonna jump right into this. Sorry, the lighting's kind of weird. There we go. Uh, let's kind of switch over to my desktop, and you will see sort of just some ideas of what I'm talking about. There we go, little o me. Happy New Year, Anissa. Good to see ya. Welcome, Cal. What's up? How's how's it going in Canada? Huh? Things are all right here in the U.S. of A. Um, yep. You guys get the idea. Let me move my lighting over. Why do I have to get so fancy with the lighting? Huh? <laughs> I was trying to give you guys these uh, futurism vibes like you see right in here. So this that's what I just typed in. Retro futurism, right? So think 50s, 60s, 70s. I like looking at like 70s sci-fi book covers is uh, a fun search. So again, this should hopefully get you inspired. All right? Look at this crazy stuff. The rings of Saturn. Look at that. I just, I'm really into this. What does this contain? It contains lots of texture, a certain sort of washed out color palette. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna emulate today. So again, fun with type as well. We'll actually um, use a uh, sci-fi book title generator. We'll come up with a cool title, but uh, just to give you an idea of kind of what we're going for today. Don't you love this? Look at that type. Very cool, dark universe. All right. And also, if you ever want to see um, what uh, t the type is, so let me just paste this into Photoshop really fast. All right, let's jump in here. Let's select this if you're like, oh, I like that type, right? Jump in, select this text. Maybe I'll just grab one word. I don't know if this is going to work because I did just grab it and I want, I want there to be truth in streaming, right? Uh, but we'll go in here, we'll go to type, and we'll go down to match font. So let's see if we could actually match this font. Match font, searching for fonts, it's a tough one, because honestly that's such a low res. Um, it's hard to, uh, and honestly it's hard to even tell what those letters are. But sure enough it does find some that might match. Like fit regular or fit wide, yeah, let's just go ahead, activate, activate fit uh, regular fit wide as well. We'll get dimensions in there, right? And we'll get this party started. Okay, so fit and dimensions. All right, welcome back, Michelle. Good to have you, Christelle. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and everybody uh, everywhere else. Let me just type in a hello. There we go. Cool. Mm. Uh, Amir, what can I do to be the best in graphic design? Follow along with these live streams. Understand the fundamentals, right? Um, uh, understand all of the design elements and how to use them. So um, that's what we're essentially going to do today. Okay. Starting with, uh, and again, I just have a couple images, right? If you're curious as to where where to get images, there's a number of places you can go. You can go to stock.adobe.com, right? So you can just use stock, of course, type in what you want, right? You could do, you know, man on cliff, right? That's kind of what I searched for and um, found some images that way. And then you can also use some of the plugins that we have as well. So, uh, yeah, so Anissa, isn't it so nostalgic, by the way? This stuff is so nostalgic to me. It's like, ah, oh, you know, I'm sure I didn't read the books, but I'm like, these are just cool, cool book covers, right? And just cool artwork. So I'm really into this, right? So we can we can kind of manipulate type as well, uh, but we're gonna have some fun and uh, you can see what you got here. Also, if you search retro futurism, you'll see a lot of this stuff as well. Space cars and flight and robots, robot trying to steal your girl, you know, that sort of thing. So, all right. Uh, 
Okay, cool. Uh, let's move on. Let's start with this image, by the way. So, by the way, you can always search, and here's some free stuff for you. You can go to plugins. You can open up your plugins panel, right? And you can search and browse plugins this way, right, through the Creative Cloud Desktop app. I've actually downloaded a couple. I have free stock search, so you can grab some free images. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to cost money. Here's free stock search. I can search for uh, what? Are, which is what would we call this? Uh, cliff. Let's just do cliff. And there it is. Here's our lovely cliff that we may or may not use. But again, cool images. Let's just take that and uh, download it like I'm doing right now. There it is. Cool. So feel free to do that. Take what you want. Uh, that's essentially what I have done right for this image just made it a little larger and again grab the images from where you want let's get into this now huh robot stealing your girl all right so uh let's close that this is uh looking pretty good at first notice the first thing i want to do is i actually want to no offense to this person but this person is not very futuristic the whole scene isn't that futuristic well we can go ahead and take care of that i'm first going to select her by the way i can also use the um, object selection tool and up here at the top i would change this to lasso boom change that to lasso click and drag around this person right no hands mode. Doo -doo 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 -doo. The little robots are going through and determining what is what is what. It selects the person for me. Again, that is the object selection tool, and then we'll go forward from there. What's up, Amir? Um, yeah, hello, Christine. Uh, so what I would go f do from here is I'd expand this, select. Uh, selection expand say by five pixels or so because we want to grab all of her because we're gonna make her disappear no offense to this lovely person here but um, what I want to do is uh, again replace them with someone a little more dramatic someone a little more um, I don't know futuristic is the goal all right so with that done let's just go ahead and fill it with content aware fill click OK you guys get the idea the person disappears and that looks pretty good for my needs uh yeah that view is scary uh, that that whole scene is scary to me because i'm like okay just don't why you gotta risk your life you risking it for the gram is that what's going on don't do that it's not needed uh, okay another thing going on here is i have this image right and I really want it to be more of a book cover size. So it's really only down here. Can I stretch this out? A lot of people will come in and I used to do this and I still will do it to a degree, right? I could take this and I could, uh, you know, copy it, maybe paste it and scale it, right? That's how some people will do it, right? That took a couple moves. It's not that bad. But what you can do is literally use another content aware tool. So we'll go down to content aware scale. Heights give you tingly feet. <laughs> I've never heard it put that way before, but I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Okay, content aware scale, right? Holding down the shift key because I don't want to constrain it. And now it will try not to distort the things down at the bottom, but it will stretch out all the um, sort of duplicate pixels, if you will. So you can kind of see how it interacts, right? This is content aware scale. Scale it on up like so. Hit OK, and I'm into that. Uh, Biola's in the house. Good to have you here. I'm going to make a foreground and a background. So right in here. Oh, so sorry about that. Uh, background. Let's do that. Let's check everything. Uh, we'll have foreground foreground right so for the foreground we want to just jump in and use our quick selection tool I use the quick selection tool like all the time typically is my my main like go-to so again jump in let's do that grab some of those pixels 
and you can see what I'm doing. Uh, from there, actually, I think I, I'm gonna grab this range as well, right? And remove some of these parts because I wanna put a cool rocket ship in here. That's my goal. Okay, so I have that selected. I have foreground right over here. We'll go ahead and add that mask. There it is, like so. And now we've separated the foreground from the background, right? Background, foreground. And we could start, we could play with those colors if we want to. All sorts of good things. Yeah, you see so the, yeah, good, good, good. The whole idea is you can't really notice there was a girl there before. Um, but now we could also play with the lighting and everything. So I would jump in. I would just, just play with levels, for instance. Let's add a levels uh, adjustment layer. Let's jump in. Let's like crank it, Shh, crank it, crank it, right? Make sure it just clips to that foreground. Right, and the reason I will use levels, I'll actually use levels or some adjustment layer, layer over sort of painting, and it, I'll usually do a combination, but when I use levels, I can always control, um, obviously, the brightness, the contrast, the midtones, and all that fun stuff, right? And it's just better to do things that way. And then what I do is I paint on the mask, right? So we'll paint on this ma levels mask, B for brush. And I can just kind of paint like so, just to have a little bit of light. So it's not so dark. I'll paint some of that back in there if I want to, okay? Anyway, let's move on. Let's make this spectacular. Muriel, what's up? Uh, is that, it uh, no, that's not an Italian flag. Ah, are you, uh, French? Is that the French flag that I'm seeing? Um, so let's go in, we'll play with the colors. We can go into hue and saturation. As soon as we start playing with these colors, right, we start to notice that it starts to look otherworldly just by playing with these colors, which works out great. Cool. Rocket ship hype, right? We're making it look spectacular. Oh, all right, let's take a look at, um, I could really use some stars. I could use a number of things. Let's actually, I have this layer with this guy right in here. Yeah, let's just go ahead. And again, he's like, this ship that means so much to me. That's essentially, that's what he's saying. It's like, whoa, maybe he's like, whoa, don't leave without me. Or like, I'm gonna be the last person on this planet. Let's select right over here, remove background, boom. It'll remove background, just like so. Converting this to a smart object. Uh, is it, Yeah, yeah, that's it, it kind of is, Dana. It's retro futurism is kind of an oxymoron, right? It is, by the way, I don't just pick these at random. It is one of those, um, you know, graphic 2021 graphic design trends. So you can see it right in here, right? Here's just some examples. And you can see the retro look, especially I think in the one on the uh, right, the Lady with the Sunglasses. Uh, but this is the idea. It's like this retro-ish look kind of, uh, I think what helped usher it in was probably Stranger Things. But right in here, you can see this as well. Again, uh, just some pretty cool stuff that has this retro look. And uh, yeah, you kind of get the idea. Cool. All right, so that's one of the design graphic design trends right now. Uh, again, this is our uh, just this man. We'll put him where he needs to go. I made him made him a smart object, so we could play with him all we want. We're gonna put him right on the edge here, and let's use puppet warp as well. Yeah, fairy, doesn't it blow your mind? It blows my mind as well the whole uh remove background so does this by the way i think this gets overlooked but i'm using um puppet warp right because i want to add even more drama to this image that i just extracted so we'll have we'll give him a wider stance like so a wider stance right we don't stand this way i mean i couldn't imagine you standing this way but what you can do is hold on the option key and you could rotate so I'll rotate this like that, and I'm able to just rotate uh, that pin so it doesn't look like he has weird ankles, right? So that's what I would do, like so. There he is, it's like, whoa! It's kind of like a Michael Jackson move, right? Yeah, ugh, I love like, Jerry, I love like cyberpunk 
um, that's that sort of look. I'm like really into it. For this also, by the way, I can just go ahead, let's rasterize this layer, let's take it, let's flip it vertically, bring them down, like, ooh. bring them down over here, um, distort, right? Zoop. Do something like that. In fact, let's not distort, let's take him, flip him vertically, I'm making the shadow now, right? So I was going to do a distort. That's what I did a second ago, but I actually want to do a warp because I want to warp the shadow over these rocks, right? So we'll take this, we'll go to warp, right? We get all these lovely little pins, right? That we can indep independently move. But what I want to do is, can I grab both of those at once? Let's just move these over here. Come on, buddy. And let's just bend them like so. Um, this also, I can add uh, some cross points. So I actually probably wanna put a horizontal line in the center there. See how it's like getting it all cockeyed and weird? I can control that center point like so basically adding some bezier points and kind of having it wrapped down like that. You guys get the idea. <sighs> All right. Displacement map would work as well. Um, so when it comes to shadows, right? First off, I could, I could spend half an hour just working on the shadow. Um, but again, this is a smart object. I'm just, I'm gonna hit the highlights. Uh, I would go in and go into Blur Gallery and I would do a Tilt Shift Blur right here. So the Tilt Shift is gonna give me these two points. Right, zoom out a little bit, right? So I have this main point, I'm gonna drag this, excuse me, grab this point right here, put it right there, grab this edge right here, shrink it up. I could shrink that up too. But basically I can work on the fall off. Let's move, oh, geez. No, let's not add another one. Let's move this up. Let's crank up the blurriness, right? And you can see what's happening, right? We want this to kind of trail off like so. Now we can see it kind of trail off. Don't worry about the, the halo effect, but now I can see it just kind of sort of blend in and work more like an actual shadow. Click okay. Now we have that fall off, right? Uh, not only do we have the fall off, I would add a mask, hit B for brush, paint out a little bit of it, right, like that. Do something like that. Okay, you guys get the idea, right? Okay, let's add our rocket ship. Sharp, then fuzzy. You got it, Mike. Mike knows what's up into it. Okay, ah, what else should we add? Hmm? What else shall we add? We could do some simple things, right? We can go in and say, hey, you know what? Let's add, say for instance, a, you know, some sort of moon, right? Or some sort of planet out there, right? Yeah, we can do that. Blend if only lights. Yeah, that'd be, that would be interesting. Right now the issue is, so anytime you add something, this is obvi obviously just like way fabricated because we notice the background's blurry. So we can't have this new element be crisp while everything else is blurry, right? What we can do is we can convert this to a smart object. We can blur it out. We can do a number of things, right? So that's what I'll do. Turn that to a smart object and we'll just call this planet. Right, for this planet, we can give it a little bit of a blur, right? We can do this, again, a couple different ways. Um, you know what I think would be really cool? Uh, let's do this. We're going to go into uh, the Tilt Shift Blur for this circle. Drag it up. Crank it like so. There we go. And really blur out that bottom portion. I'm just seeing what this looks like. 
Like that's kind of cool because it looks like it's kind of, I don't know, blend. I just like that look. I think it's kind of neat. That's all. Is that okay if we just did that just for fun? Dawn, welcome. Victoria, hello. I hear you there. Right, so that alone is actually, that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, a lot of times we have to go back in and just kind of check our references. Yes, Dana, exactly. Needs a little texture. Anytime you're like lost with what to do, just like, just take a look. Just Google, be like, oh, this is, this is the texture you're talking about. Like, let's give it some fun texture and some distortions and stuff like that, okay? Now I could go and show you how to add noise and then at spherize and do all this stuff. Like that could be one way we could go. Um, but honestly, what I would do is I would, I would actually go out to NASA. So I'd say, hey, I need some images. Let's go to NASA. NASA happens to have a Flickr photo set that you can download all that fun stuff for free. So here we are, NASA. Let's go into this explored because that already has a cool planet. I don't know what planet it is. It's kind of neat though right, and peruse. We have rocket ships. Let's go to page two. Okay, so here it is. I don't even know what this is. This is um, STS-125. Uh, no, 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 no. Ooh, the NASA Space Shuttle Atlantis. Look at this. You could see uh, the Atlantis Space Shuttle right here. Uh, silhouetted uh, in front of this planet, which is, I think is pretty darn cool, right? That's pretty darn awesome. But also what's great is we can go ahead and download the photo. Doesn't have a ton of texture. That's okay. We'll take it. We'll use it. Or what we'll do is we'll use some other ones as well. Let's grab this. Grab and go, people. There it is. Has a little bit of texture. I think we can go for more. We can add so much to this. We can add rings to this, right? Before we shrink it down, actually, let's go ahead and convert it to a smart object. And let's take a look at this. Okay. Okay, so keep in mind some rights reserved for this. Okay, so this is not, I'm not get, selling or distributing this photo, um, but you guys get the idea. Let's go back to album. All right. Uh, yeah, these are kind of nice. Oh yeah, look at that. You can see another satellite right here. Um, honestly, what I would do is, so the planets aren't changing. You can find, you could probably f find some free images of the moon out there. I personally would just use like Adobe stock and get a good image of all the planets. So it's like, hey, let's get, let's take one credit and get the whole, like all the plants in the solar system. Let's, let's see if I have them. Oh, there they are, boom. Boom, there they are. So this is what I like. Let's bring in all of these. These are the ones that we can add, okay? Hopefully that works for you. I'm gonna cheat even more. If I can, really fast. Let me show you some other examples. Here's some lovely color spheres, right? This is a really cool look, could work for what we're trying to do. Just going into some of my older work. Uh, yeah, it has the right shading because it makes it look round. So yeah, good call, Christine. Mohammed, what's up? Happy to have you join us. Now what I'm looking for is Probably just stuff that I cannot find, my friend. You know, you have those days. Let's 
All right, let's move on. Yeah, take a pic with the cement on your phone. Oh yeah. That would be good as well. Okay. Sweet. Let's jump in here. Here is the sun. Here are some other planets. Don't mind me. I'm just pulling in some other planets and then we need to get some spaceships and things. Some stars. What else do we need? I'd say that works for me. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's get rid of that. There we go, back down to our original, boom. And everything I brought in, we have this one, shrink it down, put it somewhere, right? We have the one that we made, which looks totally fake compared to these others, right? Looks kind of fake, but still might work as a nice design element. We have this awesome sun in here as well. And not only that, we have this planet too. All right, so this planet looks kind of fake. It doesn't look like it's part of the environment, right? An easy way to do that is obviously like drop the opacity. That's honestly, that's all I'm going to do. Like we don't have to make life complex, right? Another thing you could do is play with the blend modes. Uh, same thing with the sun. What we can do is, again, we could try to drop the opacity, but we actually kind of know it's not the same color. That kind of works. Let's do, so this is what's kind of inspired me to, uh, to do. Uh, since we have this cool sun, um, I loved the idea of like seeing a spaceship kind of over the planet, just like we saw with the Atlanta, Atlantis spacecraft. So we can do something kind of like that. It's a little large. All I did is make it transparent. I'd probably shift the color as well. Shift it, clip it, clip it. Clip it and shift it. Wait for it. There it is. There we go. Let's just shift it a little bit. Eh, it's okay. All right, uh, fantastic. Um, Victoria, just to answer your question, actually, I, w I work for Adobe, so that is who I work for. All right, so it's doing this pass through at 100%. I'll jump in and just try to play with a couple of these modes, a couple blend modes. I think we're okay here. I think we're okay, folks. All right, we're good. Uh, let's move on. All right. We have the sun. We have this fun planet that's clear back there that we can start to play with. Maybe it's actually um, becomes a moon. Wait for it, wait for it. Bring that back there. We have our stars, all right? There, here are all of our stars. By the way, this is just set to screen. Here's the original. We'll just set this to screen. And now we have a fun sort of spattering of stars. Let's race. 
Maybe we'll rotate. Bring this up like that. There we go. You guys get the idea. Uh, let's move on. All right. Lorianne, uh, yeah, let's let's do some more stuff. I'm not, I'm not crazy about these colors, but I know the colors are going to change. All of my elements aren't in here yet. So my goal would be to get the elements in here and then play with the colors. And I'm so glad I have uh, I have plenty of time. So this is awesome. Okay, so saving this file, let's dive into um, some more things we can do. So we, we have our resources, right? We have, um, again, NASA. I should be able to search on this. Um, Here's their photo stream, right? We have, uh, yeah, just a couple other things that I can point out. But what I actually wanna do is I want to just show you uh, Pixel Squid. So again, just giving you resources. Find something through, through NASA. You could find ships, we of course can search. Again, all I did is I licensed this one image. Like, this is perfect, right? Just license that one, you get all the planets. Nice and clean, right? You, you, the planets, it's not like we're typically discovering a lot of planets uh, anyways. So you can, um, you know, buy one for a credit and then start to use it. Here's another one I got, which I think is actually kind of cool. Um, let's move on, though. Pixel squid, boom, here we are. Uh, let's just search for, uh, I don't know, let's search for, um, I want to do like jet. Let's just type in jet, see what we get, right? And I'm gonna take one that looks kind of the most like some futuristic plane, right? Ooh, this Harrier, what is this? Oh, it's destroyed. Oh, sorry, buddy. Ooh, this is very retro. This A10 Thunderbolt. Let's check this out. So, Pixel Squid, they have all these models. They're already rendered. Yes, it does cost money. But kind of what I want is something like this, like maybe this angle, like it's shooting up into the atmosphere, okay? But I can have these, have this image from any angle. Right, I'm gonna add this to my light box, my Photoshop light box. And let's jump in here. Open up our Pixel Squid, cause guess what do they have? They also have a Photoshop panel. So you could go ahead, let's refresh this. Search through here. Um, let's pull this out. Here's everything that I've downloaded so far. Uh, and let's make sure this is going to the right account. It's called a Thunderbolt. So add to Lightbox, Photoshop Lightbox. Clicking right there. Boom. Here it is. Let's just refresh. There it is. Okay, so it did take a second, but here's what I've just downloaded. It's in my panel now. I can go ahead and click on it. It's gonna add it to whatever document you have open. I actually want it in this one right here. So we'll click like so. It's gonna download it. There it is. And we still have like a lot of control over it. Yes, so Pixel Squid is, hey, it's a company that's just trying to pay the bills. And uh, yes, it does does cost money. I think it's unlimited downloads, probably for like 20 bucks a month. I don't know, take a look. They probably have specials and different things. Um, yeah, so you have to take a look at the, the cost. It might be different for your region. So right in here, I like, I don't actually want this shadow. So what do you do? You just turn it off, boom. Turning off those shadows, wait for it. As soon as this updates, there we go. Turned it off. 
Uh, let's rotate this the way we want to rotate it. Let's rotate it up like so. Wait for it. And uh, there we have it. And let's make this a high resolution version. Cool. I would probably, I would actually duplicate that layer, rasterize the one I want so I have that back up. Uh, but now we can start to play with this a little bit more. In fact, let's go like this. Uh, let's have some fun with this, shall we? Let's do this. We're going to take this. We're going to rasterize it. Remember, I still have my backup. And uh, from here, we could have some fun like distorting this as well. Oh, it was $200? Yeah, let me know. Yeah, you guys, you guys can look it up. It's fine. All right. Uh, we can go back in to and transform this like a number of ways, right? Shall we get shall we get messy? Let's get messy with this. Let's get let's get messy, people. And actually, let's go check our references. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Let's get inspired. Let's add some curves and some fun stuff to this. Let's hurry up. Let's do this. Uh, we could just jump in and distort it, right? So we can start warping this like we did earlier, right? Grabbing these points, kind of shrinking it in, right? Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I want to... bring this into again we're just having some fun with this what else does this need this needs so much let's just take this copy it paste it take it up a notch right let's put this up here why not right we don't we don't have time guys we don't got time for this we gotta hurry I only have 30 minutes left let's put that up here like so right Let's add some, we can add some bigger rockets to this as well, but we're just making this look a little bit different. We'll add some flames there, why not? Right, since I'm playing with this a lot, we can go ahead and uh, I wanna make this a smart object. So let's do that, boom, spaceship. There's some other things you could do, because you could go ahead and apply sort of a different elements to this as well. So let's just grab this weird, uh, actually, hold on, let's click. Right, so this is just a fun gear that also came from uh, Pixel Squid. And I can add this onto this fun spaceship as well, right? Rotate it, boom, there it is. Shadows, turn that off, resolution, make that high, right? And wait for it to render, there it is, it's gorgeous. You get the idea. Shrink this down, and I'll figure out what to do with this later on, right? I don't know where this is going to go. Get rid of that. How's everybody doing this fine? There we go. Fine Friday. Right, the cool thing is this is a separate smart object. I can play with that all I want later on, but we have sort of the fundamentals right here. Since it's a smart object, right? Don't tell me I, did I rasterize this somehow? Wait for it, people. Sorry about that. Let's go back in here. There it is. Drop it in here. I'll worry about this later. There we go. Just had to get that like so. Let's save this, move that up. 
I'm sure you're learning a lot when I say, hey, save this, move this up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not being very descriptive. Okay, now let's get this where we want it to go, okay? Where do we want it to go? We want it to go up. We gotta give it some rockets, some fun things like that. So, uh, in fact, we need to adjust the levels of it as well, right? It could be darker, right? It needs to go in position up there. So let's add some fun flames and some cool stuff to it. New layer, let's do this. Let's just make a circle. In fact, this circle is just gonna be, or whatever. Let's just do, uh, we'll use the curvature tool. Curvature pen tool, we'll jump in here. We'll just do some curves like so. There you go. Just some fun curves, right? There it is. We'll go in my paths. It's gonna be saved. Path four, for path number four, we're gonna go ahead and render out some flames. Why not? Let's use some flames along this path as we can see. Guess what? We could change the angle, right? We want it to go up. So we'll have it flip the other way, which would be 180, not 360, but there we go. 180, randomize the length, right? You can see what it's doing right there, right? So this is kind of the idea. Let's throw some flames in there just for fun. There we go. Cool. All right, click OK. Done. That's one set. We can do as many of these that as we want. So let's go back in. Let's render. Check in the time. All right. Do one, one flame along a path, which just looks really cool. I might be able to use this, right? So we'll just click OK, right? I'm just making a couple of these cool flame effects. Um, we'll make this one even longer. How about that? So in here also you can use custom color flames. Typically, I mean, yeah, you could do this, but you really, honestly, I, don't, I feel like you don't need to. Because if I wanted to make these blue, uh, I could colorize them later on. So I don't really find a whole lot of use for that. Uh, we'll click OK, there we go. OK, cool, got it, got it. Uh, in fact, I want this to be part of my spaceship. Adjust this canvas size. Uh, I apologize. Kai, how you doing? I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, if I'm missing anything in chat. Uh, cool. There's that is. Boom. Let's go in here. Flames, baby. Let's put those flames in there. Right? Let's make them look awesome. Huh. Let's put these in front and we're going to have some fun with this. First of all, this would be a horrible design because I like if there really are flames coming out of this engine, which is what I was going to do, it's probably going to burn up this this tail. Um, but you know what? Let's suspend our belief for a second. Let's distort this into place as in warp. Warp it into place. There we go and have it kind of come out like that. Kind of like that, folks. There we go. There we go. All righty. We're going to mask this one out. Like so. And like so. Mm, I don't know if that's really working. I should probably put them someplace else. All right, we'll leave those off. Less is more at this point. All right. 
Uh, how do you access these assets? Uh, kind of depends on what assets you mean. Um, obviously, I used Pixel Squid. Uh, what I ultimately end up with is I end up with everything in my library panel. So right in here, when I want flame, I can type in flame, right? We could see this is some flames that I that I bought. I always encourage people like if you can like use real photos, it's just it's gonna obviously look much more realistic rather than trying to fabricate something. So if I take this and I'm gonna change this to say lighten or even screen, like look at these flames. This is what I want. Well, let's deselect that. my spaceship but these these flames this this looks much more realistic than what I was trying to do okay so again that's how I come up or that's that's where I put my resources in my libraries panel let's drop in the ship let's shrink it down All right like so we'll give it an angle right kind of like that maybe it's just taking off I don't know uh, this is something I'm gonna play with for a little bit Right? Is it just taking off? Right? That is the big question. Flame on. That's right. Uh, how did you how did you do that with the path and the fire? So you you really just need to create any uh, path any path with any vector tool. So you could even take a circle change it to path, draw out a circle, right? And then if we take a look, here's my work path. I typically save it. So if you double click, you'll just save that as path five. But once you have that path and once you're on its own layer, then you can go ahead and just apply that flame to it, right? You go to render flame and there's your, your cool ring of fire. Very Johnny Cash. All right. So I'm not crazy about those flames. I think you guys can agree, right? Curve the wings. Oh yeah, that's a great idea, right? The cool thing is that this is a smart object so I could jump in and exactly like you're saying, that's exactly what I need to do. Let's give this more breathing room. Uh, 26, 3200. There we go. Let's give this more breathing room. And let's take this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and distort it. Like that, we can do, ah, do we like that? No, we kinda do not. Sorry about that. It just needs to have more motion. So much needs to happen. And I only have, uh, uh, nine more minutes. There it is. Command T, let's go ahead and distort this down. This is what I want, right? Like that, that's what we need. We need this to be big and awesome like that. That's what I'm going for, right? That hopefully looks cooler. Please hurry, Paul. Always a race against time. Same thing with these flames, right? These flames need to be so much longer and more dramatic, right? Like that. There we go. Disregard that I flipped these wings, technically the shadows would be different. But, uh, you know, I'm running out of time. Get rid of that altogether. Get rid of that, right? Again, just making it fun. Have as much fun with this as you want, right? So again, this needs to be actually brighter. that it's looking a little fake oh so much I need to do 
I would paint, I would paint smoke in here. I would actually use, um, I would use clouds as smoke. So let's just switch over. If you don't mind. Um, right in here again, we can, we can paint on a little bit of like, uh, maybe like some smoke, like it's leaving the atmosphere. But like I said a second ago, I would jump in and uh, you can use, I would just use clouds. So I happen to have some cloud brushes right in here. So let's take one right here. Let's put it like so, there it is. Right, we still have that depth issue. We'll fix it right now. Let's fix it, folks. We must hurry. Take this and this, bring it up. I probably didn't grab the man's shadow. There we go. There we go, kind of like that. Do you guys see what's happening? So there's one, let's do one on another layer. Let's grab some other clouds, right? We could rotate this a little bit, shrink it down if we want to, but just adding some more smoke and we'll make this smaller as well. Um, long live the 80s, yes. This needs to be tinted that same color too. So what I'll do a lot of times is grab a color, go to, your, let's just group these together and hide them, ship, let's do this, oh, sorry, here's a later layer with just that color and I'm going to clip it to just that spaceship and then I can play with sort of the blend modes, so I can add a splash of that atmospheric color onto my spaceship, so notice how it's changing it, Right, can change that to screen, and it starts to make it look just like much more realistic, in my opinion. Right, so we have this screen that looks good. I could always scale that back, down like so, and uh, blend this all I want. So that's kind of the idea. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's add some fun texture to it as well. Ready for this? Let's do this really fast. I want a medium. Let's do this. I want a medium gray. So down here, I'm going to hold down the Option key, click. Uh, option key click to make a new layer. Uh, I'll change this to soft light and fill soft light with a neutral color of 50% gray. So I just made a soft light layer that's actually filled with 50% gray, right? So there's my 50% gray. But actually what I wanna do is I wanna jump in and give this some noise so we could do this a couple time, a couple different ways of course just like with anything else we could add noise as we can see right here kind of tighten that up as much as we want right so it's going to make it less we can see it's just going to build on that contrast right uh in this case i kind of want it maybe less intense click ok change this blend mode change this to like overlay Right, that's all I'm doing. I just added this new layer on top, right? It is this texture layer that just gives it this nice sort of retro texture that I'm into. All right, couple more things because we need to add our, t uh, add our title. Oh yeah, we, we could use some more. I do, I think we need some more clouds to be honest with you. Oops, change that to white. Right, like that, there we go. And again, a lot of that could be brighter. We could use some more cool moons and stuff like that. And we could have some fun with colors. So we can jump into color lookup. Color lookup, these are our lookup tables. And this is what I'd play with. Try a two strip look, which just makes it teal and like orange, right? Uh, but we can go in and go into these, some of these Fuji looks and just start to get a whole different look. Uh, I mean, not drastic, but I'm changing the tint of all of it. And let's go ahead and generate a title. Let's hurry up. Let's go. SCI. Bye, book title generator. Let's do this. We'll hit this. Zodiac of Mars. Hey, why not? Apex Arcadia, that's such a 70s sci-fi. 
Apex Arcadia. What? What is going? What is Apex Arcadia? And how can I be involved? Move that behind the spaceship. You guys get the idea. And we had some fun with some retro sci-fi art. Uh, I will leave you with this one just for fun. This is another one I kind of worked on, which you know, don't don't get weirded out by it. But uh, here's, you know, a couple, a couple versions for you. Apex Arcadia, Babylon Rising, or whatever, who knows? But just retro sci-fi fun. Uh, yeah, so we did a lot. I think we did a lot in an hour, by the way. Like, let's not kid ourselves. It needs a lot of work, but for the work we've done, uh, turned out pretty well. So, uh, yeah, I'm wrapping up here. I'm actually gonna take over. Um, hopefully you guys aren't sick of me, but I'll be doing some uh, illustration later on uh, in Kyle's place. But what you have up next is Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, which basically made a poster. You get to do that in Illustrator. The one and only Howard Pinsky is up after that, and then we'll do some hand lettering with me later on. So that's roughly the schedule. I appreciate you guys. Dana, what's up? I always like seeing your name, and you're awesome. Victoria, and Chow, and Afroja, and St. Yannick, and Nate, and Michelle, and Frank. You guys are all amazing, and you guys really make my day. So, you know, keep it futuristic. Have fun out there. Be safe. Make sure you're washing your hands, and we will uh, see you shortly. Thanks for watching.